I, and I think most people that have these Nanoleaf shapes panels, have a bit of a problem. See, the controllers, these things, the things that actually run the panels, keep dying. I'm on my fourth in a round, or actually under three years, and while Nanoleaf are sending me free replacement controllers, at some point they're gonna run out and just stop making more. They're gonna shelve the whole product line, and I'll have some very expensive plastic hung on my wall that's completely useless. This, by the way, is why I hate closed source stuff. When Nanoleaf does end of life the shapes line, and that is a when, not if, by the way, everyone who has one of these will be up a creek without a paddle when it comes to repairing or replacing broken parts. If it was open source, or at least mandatory to make it open source when a line gets discontinued, the community could keep that stuff working and keep it from going to a landfill. Anyway, the point is, I'm trying to do something about that. I'm attempting to reverse engineer at least the very basics of how to get the panels to change colours, and this video is a mix of what I've learned so far, a bit of a guide on how you might go about reverse engineering electronics like this yourself, and a request for your help in figuring out the UART communications data. Let's start with what I know so far. The failure mode for the controllers is that they utterly brick themselves. No lights on the controller, none on the panels, nothing, it's just dead as a doornail. No level of reset does anything to fix this, it's just fully bricked. If your shapes controller does this, at least for the time being, you can go to Nanoleaf's recall page and claim your free replacement controller. Since I have three bricked controllers, or actually I can only find two, I think I threw one away, I decided to crack one open and see what's inside. This thing is remarkably complicated. There are three separate microcontrollers in here. One is a MediaTek MT7688AN, which runs OpenWRT and the Wi-Fi communications. There is also an EFR32MG21, which handles the BLE, our Bluetooth Low Energy and Thread communications, and also one EFM8BB10F8G microcontroller that does the communications with the panels and the little LEDs in the front and that sort of stuff. The panels themselves are powered by a 42 volt power supply, and even more interestingly, there are only three pins to connect the controller and the panels together. Power, ground, and signal. And unlike the older uh, Aurora panels, that you, this uses three volt communications rather than the line voltage, which was uh, 24 volts at the time. Now each panel not only has three sets of LEDs, but it has its own microcontroller. Now sadly, I don't know exactly what I see that is, although if anyone does know, feel free to let me know in the comments. I would love to understand some more, but anyway, the signal wire is, I believe, a single wire UART connection with an open drain for transmitting. It's active low, and if it follows the Aurora signal, it should be AN1 and 115,200 baud. I know that the controller does quite a lot of initialization to work out what orientation the panels are in. The panels themselves have six possible connection points on them, and I think each of those has, or the data lines from those connections, are connected to a different port on the panel's microcontroller, so that the panel, panel knows which port is in use and what's connected either side of it. The main controller, I assume anyway, then does a sort of tree search, and that's how it knows what order and orientation all your panels are in. Now, I know that's a lot already, but before we go even deeper into the weeds of the UART data, I wanted to talk you through how you might start to reverse engineer your own electronics, and what sort of tools you might need to do so. Generally speaking, you will need access to the electronics. Sometimes that is destructive, like the Nanoleaf controllers and, and the panels, in fact, and sometimes you can get by with external access, also like these uh, Nanoleaf panels to get the active UART data, but you will need internal access to see how it works, and you'll want a toolkit, kind of like the iFixit Protect toolkit. Now that's not an ad, I just genuinely like this and use it an awful lot, and so I do recommend it, but something like this. 
Once you have access, you can then work out at very least like what chips are there and how stuff's connected. In my case, that was to work out that the communications pin was connected to the FM8 chip. Then you can start probing. You can use a multimeter to check voltages, careful not to short anything though, and even just to check with it off and you know, switched off with no power to it to check what is connected to what. You can then use, say, an oscilloscope to look at what is going on, or maybe you want a logic analyzer. I bought this ridiculously cheap one on Amazon, and you can use it with PulseView to capture the UART data. It's actually a pretty handy bit of kit, and it's remarkably cheap, so highly recommend it. You might also want to try isolated testing, in which case you might need a lab bench power supply. I got this one on Amazon too, and I'll, I'll link to everything that I'm talking about in the description for you if you're interested. But anyway, you can then look at the signals that are flowing and see if you can work out anything useful. You might also be able to find SWD pads near a microcontroller and use something like a Seger clone to pull the firmware. But frankly, that is way above beginner levels and frankly over my head too, despite writing firmware for my own, my, you know, actually multiple uh, hardware and microcontroller boards myself, but I'll leave some links to some excellent hardware hackers that you can learn that sort of stuff from in the description. Now, since I'm struggling to come up with some, uh, well, more general advice, because uh, you really kind of end up with specifics and that's not very helpful, but let's move on to looking at the UR data. Now, this is the part where I need your help. I've published the PulseView captures uh, to a GitHub repo that's linked in the description, but I'm having a hard time deciphering them. I know that the controller does a four byte-ish pulse every 19 milliseconds or at 50 hertz, and I think it generally uses six bytes for color changes sometimes. I'm sure that part of that is the address for the panel that it's going to, and then, uh, you know, red, green, and blue color values, but I'm not sure in what order, and that would only make up four of the potentially six or seven bytes that I capture. I've also captured the frame when you connect a new panel, which is a frankly insane amount of communications that I just can't make heads or tails of. PulseView seems to pick different start and stop blocks randomly per byte, even on a repeated pulse, so I'm having a hard time decoding what it actually is doing. I'm incredibly new to PulseView though, so I'm probably just missing a step, or there's something that I, I should know but don't, and so if you have any experience with that, please do let me know in the comments. I've also captured data while it was changing colors in manual mode. That might be seven bytes instead? I'm pretty lost here. I'm gonna keep poring over it, but if anyone with more experience in decoding this sort of stuff would like to give me a hand, I would greatly appreciate it. Once I get a rough idea of what data to fire at a panel, I'll write some code on an Arduino compatible board and use these flexible linkers that I bought and then cut up uh, to be able to feed it 42 volts and give it some data. Once I've got one panel working, well, the rest should be easy, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, that's basically what I've got so far. I'm really looking forward to getting this working, and of course, anything that I make will be open source on that repo. Right now, I'm mostly just looking to make them change colors. Anything past that, things like the panel placement, is a lower priority me. Uh, for me, but again, being open source, if you want, you can give it a go. I would love to see it. In fact, submit a pull request. So yeah, that's pretty much what I've got so far. Like I said, I'll keep looking at it, and if you have any advice or any thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments, or jump over to the GitHub repo and submit a pull request or an issue or something. Just let me know. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, or more general tech reviews, but also once I do get something working, I will make a video about it, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out all the stuff that I've mentioned in the description, including the GitHub repo, and some of the tools that I recommend if you want to do some hardware hacking and reverse engineering yourself, and feel free to check out plenty of other videos on the end cards as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.